Right, we'll do a quick recap on osmosis and then the focus on this is how does water get from the outside of the roots into the vascular bundle or the xylem and phloem are found. So um, when we talk about movement of water, two things we've talked about so far are mass flow and osmosis. Um, so let's talk about osmosis first, a quick reminder. So osmosis is the movement of water. Now you could say it's movement of water from a high water potential to a low water potential. But if you look here, water potential is never greater than zero. So it's better to say it's the movement of water from a less negative to a more negative uh, region. So this is just something modeling a cell. Imagine putting a cell into a uh, beaker of water and the beaker of water has a water potential of minus 800 kilopascal. The cell has a water potential of minus 1500 kilopascal. Which way is the water going to move? So if we remind ourselves, osmosis is the movement of water from a less negative to a more negative. So we would expect the water to enter this cell. And if it enters the cell, the cell is going to get, well, the cytoplasm and the vacuole is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's going to get so full of water that it's going to, um, it's going to, there's going to be a slight force against the cell wall because it's completely full. So we call that stage when it's completely full, it becomes turgid when it's completely full of water. Okay, so water, for, well, for it to be osmosis, it's always a movement from less negative to more negative, which you've previously been told from a high water potential to a low water potential. It's the same thing, but this is just a better way to say it. Osmosis always ha has to occur across a cell membrane as well, a partially per permeable membrane. Okay, and if water enters a cell, it can then become fully turgid. So what happens then if I put this same cell into an environment which is minus 2000 kilopascal? So it's still the same uh, water potential of the cell of minus 1500. Well, it's a movement of uh, from a, a, a less negative to a more negative. So we'd expect the water to start going out. And if it starts going out, it's losing water. The vacuole is going to get smaller. The cytoplasm is going to lose water as well. And eventually the the cell membrane is going to start pulling away from the cell wall. And at that point, we say it has become um, well, we could say flaccid. And if the cell membrane is pulled away from the from the wall itself, we say that it has plasmalized. Plasmalized. There we go. We can say plasmolysis is occurred. Right, so we're interested in this part. When we talk about the movement of water through the plant, we're talking about what's happening in the root. How does water get from A to B? How has it got there? How did it get from that region? There's different ways it can happen. We've got the apoplast, the symplast, and the vacuolar pathway. So here's um, just a very simple image to show the different pathways. So it, you can see one arrow is going through, this is, these are two cells. One arrow is going through the cell wall. One arrow here, this middle one, seems to be passing through a gap between two neighboring cells. So it's actually inside the cytoplasm. And somehow it's just, it seems to be jumping through this little gap into the other, 
other cells, cytoplasm. And then another one where the arrow is not shown, but we've got these vacuoles. Somehow water seems to be passing from one vacuole to the other as well. So let's look at that into a little bit more detail. <clears throat> and we need to talk about, remember, mass flow as well and osmosis. Right, so here's three cells, one, two, and three. And we've got three arrows representing how water's moving. So we've got the apoplast, and apoplast is movement of water through the cell walls or the region just outside the cell membrane. So because there's no cell membrane involved, this has to be happening through mass flow. So there's nothing here to do with the water potential, although water potential is creating this. So mass flow is to do with pressure differences. There's a high hydrostatic pressure of water. So if we talk about mass flow, this is the movement of water from a high hydrostatic pressure. There we go. To low hydrostatic pressure. Apologies, my Ryan. So why is there a high hydrostatic pressure and a low hydrostatic pressure? There's an area where there's more water compared to another area. Well, if we go back to this root here, the reason why water enters this root in the first place is because active transport is, is occurring. There's an active transport of mineral ions from the soil into the actual, just this region here of the root. So if mineral ions are being, are being actively transported into the cortex region of the root, well, that's going to lower the water potential. And if the water potential is lowered, then it's going to become more negative. It's going to be a, it's going to be a higher negative or oh, sorry, a more negative water potential compared to outside. And water moves from less negative to more negative. So as the water builds up here, as it builds up more and more and more, we're starting to build up a water pressure, a high hydrostatic pressure. And that's gonna, all the, all the cells are gonna become turgid. That's gonna be applying pressure to the cell walls and they're gonna become so full eventually the water is going to start moving through the, the cell wall regions to areas where the water pressure is lower and it will finally make its way through there. So that's our uh, apoplast pathway. Now the other two are simplast. So, sorry, simplast and vacuola. So the simplast here, this one is it, just going from one cytoplasm to another. And the way it's doing that, you can see there's these gaps in the cell wall. And we call these gaps the plasmodesmata. Plasmodesmata. Okay, these little gaps. So there are regions where the water is able, easily able to pass through from one side's plasma to another. Now, the reason why this is still considered osmosis is because although there's no cell wall there, there is still a cell membrane. So the water is still having to pass through a membrane, but there's just less resistance because there's no cell wall there. All right, so that's the simplast. It's passing through the plasma desmata from one cytoplasm to another. And then finally, we've got the vacuola, which is a bit like the simplast as well, but not only does it pass through the different the neighboring cytoplasms, it's also passing through the vacuoles as well from one to the next. So there's our three water pathways. These are all occurring. The reason why water is moving, so if you think of this is the, the outer edge of the root. Okay. 
And this here is the center. I think this is the way it's moving. It's moving towards the center. Let's go back here. This is our center. It's moving from the outside. Inside, why is it moving that way? We've got to be thinking about mass flow and osmosis. So clearly from this cell here to this cell to this cell, the water potential as we go closer to the center is getting lower and lower and lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. And that's why water keeps moving towards the center. There's a constant gradient of, of more negative water potential or lower water potential. And that's the same with the vacuolar pathway as well. It's all because of the water potential is constantly lower and lower and lower as you go into the center. This one, slightly different. The reason why the water is moving towards the center is because there is a high hydrostatic pressure on the outer edge of the roots compared to the center of the roots.